not like a crazy person, but I was walking a lot. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, where I talk about all of the fun crafty goodness that I've been up to over the past couple weeks. Today is a normal knitting podcast episode. We're on episode 135, which is crazy. Um, but I just have a quick little episode for you today. I don't have tons of stuff to show. I've been a relatively monogamous knitter lately, but I still wanted to sit down and record for you. Before we jump on in, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main one is birchandlilyfiber.com and my Instagram is birch.and.lily. Everything that I talk about today as well as places where you can find me are all linked down below in the description. I also have two other quick announcements that I wanted to let you know about before we start. The first one being that an update did go live in the shop, oh gosh, a couple weeks ago now, and I realized, I don't know why I didn't talk about it on YouTube, but I didn't. Um, but it is my happy little accidents update. I have been saving up yarn either that was like, I was trying to come up with a new colorway and it didn't work out exactly how I wanted, but it was still great or a colorway that's in the shop and it had a rogue speckle in the wrong color somewhere, stuff like that. It is in the shop right now at a very steep discount. Um, I mostly just wanna make my money back for the yarn. So if you've been wanting to try out my yarn and you couldn't maybe afford a regular skein, this may be a great way to try some out. The other announcement that I did wanna make, and I realized I didn't bring it with me, but I'll put some B-roll up on the screen, the resource raglan pattern, which I've been teasing to you guys for, I swear, like months now, um, is finally releasing this weekend. This Friday, I think that's June 30th, the pattern will be live. Um, Sarah also, if you didn't watch last week's episode, which you really should, it was a really fun one to film. Um, it was basically, I filmed how long it took me to knit a sweater and timed absolutely everything. And I was shocked how long it took. Um, but anyways, I digress. Sarah was so sweet and gave me a coupon code for you guys to use to purchase the resource raglan because we worked together to test it and I filmed that video and all sorts of stuff. Anyways, if you want to grab the resource raglan this Friday, use the code Birch and Lily and it will give you some sort of discount. <laughs> she didn't tell me what the discount was going to be um, just because she's got so much going on right now, but she did say there's a special coupon code for you guys to get a special discount. So remember to use the code Birch and Lily to grab your resource raglan pattern. Okay, so would you believe it? I don't have any finished objects. I feel like this is the first time in ages that I haven't had finished objects. Um, I will tell you quickly what I'm wearing though. I've talked about this before. This is my Miles tee. It's a pattern by Ozetta. I knit this out of my yarn. This is birch sock in the colorway Jaredale. I don't know if there's any in this shop right now. Um, I'm looking at my yarn wall. There's one skein of Surrey left. If you want me to dye some up for you for a sweater or something though, you can always send me an email. Um, but yeah, this is my Miles T and it's just really sweet. I won't talk too much about it. It's got a curved hem. I'm in sweatpants as per usual. But yeah, it's a rainy day and I didn't want a full sweater cause it's still too warm for that. But I figured this tee would be a nice choice. It's so comfy. I love it. Um, and yeah. Like I said, won't get into it too much, but that is what I'm wearing. So, shall we move on to what I've been working on? I have one new cast on. I think I showed the yarn for this in my last sit down podcast. This bag is from Denim and Rain. Um, and this is my Brooklyn Raglan Light. It is smooshed on some itty bitty 12 inch circulars right now because I'm doing short rows. And I find short rows are much easier if I do them on tiny circulars. So <laughs> it looks ridiculous. It like fits in the palm of my hand. But uh, this is my Brooklyn Raglan Light. This is a pattern that's coming, I think the end of next month from Tori Yu. Um, if you've seen her Brooklyn Raglan pattern before, this is basically the same thing, except it's knit out of fingering weight yarn instead of DK. I am gonna do the t-shirt version. Um, so the pattern will come with long, like a long sleeve version and a t-shirt version. And I'm just doing the t-shirt. Um, I had this yarn stick, stickin'. I had this yarn kicking around um, 
from Woolberry Fiber Co., which I thought was the perfect spring summery tea sort of color. This is called Conch. And as always, it blows out unless I hold it back here. <laughs> so that gives you a decent idea. It's like a, a creamy, buttery yellow with peachy tones and like grasshoppery, yellowy green tones. It's very pretty. Um, I really like how it's knitting up. So there you can see kind of, it's like that buttery color with all those other fun colors throughout. It's not really speckly. I would say it's more of like a variegated, but it's really pretty. So yeah, just in the short rows, this is a raglan. So you can kind of see right here, my little raglan caps starting. The body, like the front and the back of the pattern is just stockinette. And then the sleeve caps have this really beautiful, um, what kind of texture is this? I think it's seed stitch. Just really simple texture, but very pretty. So there's like a couple different sets of short rows in here. I finished the first set and I think there's one more and then I'll be able to just move into knitting in the round instead of having to knit flat back and forth, which I'm excited for. I always try <laughs> when I cast something new on, I try to just sit down and get all of the short rows done right away if I can and the ribbing because that's not so much fun for me. But once I get going in the round and it's a little bit more mindless, that's when it really becomes fun. So yeah, I love this. I'm enjoying it very much. It's got a good old tubular cast on for the ribbing. I feel like I'm finally starting to get good at tubular cast ons. I have had to do it memorized. So I would say that is a win for sure. And yeah, just, just gonna keep going away on this. Did I say I'm knitting a size three? Um, I think I'm a size three in basically all of Tori's patterns. Um, I have a 40 inch bust and so the pattern calls I think for about two to four inches of positive ease and so doing the size three is going to give me two inches of positive ease which I feel like is maybe how much I have on this Miles T. I know some other garments that I have have actually my downtown hoodie which is still my favorite knit to date has two inches of positive ease and I really like the fit on that so this should be great. Now <laughs> My tale of woe from last episode, my Maybury cardigan, is finally getting somewhere. I'm feeling good about it. Um, I'm focusing a lot on it and my heirloom quilt cardigan, and they're getting really, really far. I guess I didn't say the secret sample knit that I was working on is done, so that's nice. That's out of the way. I'm just waiting for a shipping label, and that'll be off. Um, so yeah, now I have lots of time to work on these. <laughs> so I'm almost caught up to where I made the mistake on the Mayberry cardigan, um, and I think tonight I should totally be able to get past that, where the <laughs> sleeve split is basically where I'd like to get past. This bag is from Jenna Rose Handmade. It's amazing. I took it and used it as my purse <laughs> in Nashville, which I'll talk about a little bit more at the end. Um, last weekend, my husband and I were in Nashville with his parents. It was so much fun. Um, so yeah, if you want to hear a little bit about that, I'll talk a bit about that at the end. But I used it as my purse the whole trip and it held up incredibly. Um, so I've said before, I love her bags, but... I feel like that says something too, because I was walking around like a crazy person in Nashville. Not like a crazy person, but I was walking a lot. <laughs> My feet were very dead by the end, but it was great. It was wonderful. Very humid, but very fun. <laughs> so here we go. Almost at the sleeve split. Um, I feel like it's getting hard to hold up a little bit now. Once I have the sleeves, it'll be better, but show you my progress keeper. So I've got a good chunk done, I would say. Um, this progress keeper, it's backwards right now, but that's also from Denim and Rain. And yeah, I, I guess I could put it over my shoulders. Maybe that would show, it's kind of smushed on the needles a little bit, but oh, that was a bad idea. <laughs> Catching, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Once I have this sleeve split done, I think I'll be able to do that. But we're getting somewhere. There are no mistakes. I've been counting my stitches like crazy. 
The increases look beautiful and I'm very proud and I will finish this. I have until July 20th so I have like just under a month. I totally think I can do it. So yeah um this is like I said the Maybury cardigan. It's coming soon from Amy Loudon and it's a beautiful squishy fisherman's rib pattern with a double knit button band. I have never done fisherman's rib. I've never done a double knit button band until this garment and both are shockingly easy. Um, so I, if you don't know what a double knit button band is, which I didn't know until I learned how to do it on here, all the stitches, if you can tell, are on the needle, but you're knitting only half of them every row and then it makes it so it's like a tube that's attached to your knitting. So double thick, double squishy. Very shortly I'll be adding buttonholes into this, which I am interested in how that is done. I feel like I'm learning a lot with this pattern. So it's very fun. I can't wait to have it. It's so squishy. It's, oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, it basically, it's, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Fisherman's Rib is just another way of knitting brioche, isn't it? It looks like brioche. I don't know. Um, but I like it a lot. So I'm proud of myself. There was a point where I was like, I don't even know if I can pick this up and keep doing it, but I have and we're getting somewhere and it's great. Um, the yarn, I'm still, <laughs> you probably hate me by now for this, but I'm still not sharing the name. This will be in the shop eventually. I've just, with this mistake I made, I haven't had time to finish tying up the collection that this is a part of, so it's it's been on the back burner and I've just been a crazy nitty lady. So yeah, today is rainy and cold and I'll be able to work on this some more because I can't get in the garden and weed in the mud. So I'm doing the size five for this. I think it's gonna give me about eight inches of positive ease. Um, which I think will be perfect for a cardigan, especially one like this. I feel like with how squishy it is, you can get away with something quite oversized. So that's kind of where I was going with that. And yeah, I'm just, I'm pleased to say that we're getting somewhere. Once the sleeve split is done, it'll go fast because I'm at the point where there's like tons and tons and tons and tons of stitches. But once I get rid of those sleeve stitches for a little bit and just work on the body, I think it should fly. There's also no increases or anything at that point. So that should also speed stuff up a lot too because I can just go back and forth mindlessly. So yeah, that's my Mabry cardigan. By next time, maybe I'll have the body done. That's kind of what I'm hoping. We'll see. And the other project that I have been working on is my heirloom quilt cardigan in this nice big bag because since it's a scrappy cardigan, I have way too many balls of yarn in here. <laughs> um, thankfully, when I put it down, I had just finished a block so I can hold it up pretty easily. Actually, I could probably even try it on. So here it is. The one side is like all connected at the top now and then I've worked across the back. So this is like the center panel here and then this is like what's gonna sit here-ish. Um, but yeah, so I think you've seen all the blocks here before so we'll flip it and I'll show you these rows. That's where we are. I feel like I'm doing a pretty decent job of like keeping the colors evenly distributed throughout. It's hard to do it perfectly, but my goal is to like not have two of the same color touching across or like up and down. The, the corner can touch, but just like everything is different as possible around it. Wow, I love holding this up on the camera. I feel like it looks even prettier <laughs> when I hold it up. So should we try it on? I haven't done this yet, so. Okay, that's really pretty. So obviously I don't have anything to put over my shoulder on this side, but wow, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. So it'll have 
like full length sleeves and then I obviously have to add like ribbing all the way around this but like the sleeves won't take that long because I literally only have to knit I'll probably block this quick before I put the sleeves on just so I know what's going on but I really only have to knit like a really short sleeve so not bad oh my gosh that's so pretty I'm so excited. So for this cardigan, I am, I feel like I'm closer than I was before. <laughs> um, for this, I am knitting a size two. The pattern has three sizes, um, but it's pretty customizable. So like you could change your needle size or just add more blocks actually, which I have done. The pattern only calls for three blocks down and I did four because I have big boobs. The three was gonna hit like way too short, way too cropped for my liking. So this I think will be much better. Um, so I did change that. And then the other thing I'm doing differently is the pattern calls to knit each of these blocks individually and then seam them all together. And I said, heck no, I'm not seaming. And so I'm doing, if you can see those like lines down each column, I'm doing a join as you go method. It's the same one that is mentioned in the northeasterly blanket pattern. So if you've knit the northeasterly or if you own that pattern, that's what I'm doing for this. Um, so when I add a new block on, I just pick up stitches along here. It's hard to do when I'm trying to look at my monitor and make sure I'm pointing at the right thing. So I pick up stitches along here and then as I'm knitting up, I'm joining on the side. So I feel like it saved me some time. I obviously had to seam at the top here still. So there's, I just did a three needle bind off basically um, to join at the top here. And oh my goodness, do I have many ends to weave in. Uh, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I think I can finish this in time, but will I have all the ends weave or woven in? Probably not. I'll probably just weave in the ones around the edges that would be visible, take my photos, and weave the rest in later. Because, yeah, every single block has four ends, plus there's two ends where I seamed it together, and there's there's just a lot going on. <laughs> so it's, it's a scrappy blanket in the form of a cardigan. I don't know if I said, um, I, no, I know I didn't say, this pattern is coming from Katrin Seeberger. This is her first pattern. Um, I think I can, I will link her Instagram down below so you can look at her page um, and kind of keep an eye on it for the release date. I think this should be out the end of July as well. And yeah, I love it so much, especially now that I put it on, oh my goodness. Like I said, I hadn't tried it on until now. I was kind of wanting to save it to the podcast and I'm glad I did. So I have one, three more rows of quilt blocks. I can't talk today. Three more rows of quilt blocks and then I'll be able to start the sleeves and the ribbing and everything. And I feel like those will go fast because it's it's not color work, intarsia, mix. It's knitting in the round. So. Well, I guess the ribbing is knit flat and then the sleeves will be knit in the round. So those will both go really, really fast. But yeah, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Anyways, that's all I've been working on and I'm looking at my notes and I forgot one acquisition. So you won't see me leave, but I'll be right back. So Carson of Carsley Handmade, you've heard me talk about her so much lately. Um, she's become a very dear friend. I'm so thankful for her. She spoiled me. Um, I had sent her yarn for to try out and then for prizes for our knit along that we did last, well, I guess it was this month and last month. Anyways, and I expected nothing from it. I told her, no, <laughs> it's a gift. She insisted on sending me something, which is so sweet and I'm so excited about. She sent me these really sweet little mini skeins which are so my colors, especially this one. Oh my gosh. It's like the, the minty, brighter version of this yarn. Um, but I love them. I haven't decided what I'm gonna make with them yet. I think they need to go into like a sweater or something with like a tonal color and then some fun stripes. I don't know. 
he'll figure it out. Ooh, maybe a Straya hat by Andrea Maori. Hmm. Anyways, you can leave me ideas down below if you want, but these are from her local yarn shop, which I thought was really cool. Um, they dye them up themselves. They're called Beaumont Yarn Company, and they're all 20 gram mini skeins, 75% merino, 25% nylon. I'm assuming they're super wash. They feel super wash. Um, and just looking at the color of them, they're, su they're definitely super wash, but they're just so beautiful. I feel like this is Carson's color, <laughs> and this is my color, and then this is just a smattering of our colors together. <laughs> so... They're beautiful. Thank you so much, Carson. She also sent me some tea that I'm excited about. We were talking and, um, first of all, yum, peach and honey. Um, but she was joking that I should make, uh, like Texas sweet peach tea with them. And I was telling her, we got talking because I'm from Alberta, Canada, and she's living in Texas right now, how in Canada, there is no such thing as sweet tea. Like, all the iced tea is sweet tea. There's no unsweetened tea. So if you order iced tea, you're going to get sweet tea. And she was like, oh my goodness, that's so much like Texas. And I don't know, it was kind of cool <laughs> just to talk about how many similarities Alberta and Texas have. But I'm going to make myself some iced sweet peach tea out of those. There's quite a few bags in there. I just haven't sat down and done it. But, uh... I feel like that would make some delicious tea. I love peach stuff. My go-to drink at Starbucks, if I'm not getting, well, if I get coffee, it's a cinnamon dolce latte. If I'm getting something else, I like a, it's such a mouthful, peach green tea lemonade. So good. But yeah, thank you so much, Carson. I am so excited to find a project for those minis. And if you have an idea, let me know in the comments. My other acquisition, I have fallen in love with quilted project bags lately. <laughs> and I saw that this Handmade Life had a little update of some in her shop. And this one just totally spoke to me. It is the most bright, ridiculous, springy, summery quilted bag. The back is super cute too. It's like a a larger I would I would say you could fit a shawl or something in here I might move my not that I've worked on it in a while um but my half and half triangles wrap into here I feel like it would fit really well um but just a really nice quilted bag like the size of a cake of yarn on the bottom I would say um I don't know if she has any more in her shop but she definitely has been updating her shop with more and more project bags lately so I'll make sure it is linked down below but this is I just thought it was really cute so I treated myself to that and yeah I think that is all I have to talk about this episode um I don't know what I'm filming next week I haven't oh I haven't talked about Nashville <laughs> Let's talk about Nashville first. So I went to Nashville last weekend just for four days with my husband and my mother and father-in-law and it was super fun. It was so humid. Um, I still talk in Celsius so it was like 30 plus degrees Celsius plus the humidity so it felt like like 35 almost 40 some days. It was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> I thankfully didn't get too burnt. Uh, we did a lot of walking around. We were on Broadway Street most every night. Um, we did a couple days on Broadway too. I preferred that. It wasn't so busy. <laughs> um, and then we hung out by the pool. The pool was wonderful. Um, and yeah, just explored a lot. One of my favorite things, I would say, we were able to go to the Grand Old Opry. That was so cool. I didn't think it would be my favorite, but it definitely was. I like, or I, I really enjoyed how there's so many different artists and they all like just sing a little smattering of their stuff. So if there was one you didn't like as much, you knew the next one was probably going to be great. I don't know. It was really cool. I really, really enjoyed it. We went to a lot of museums. Um, the Tennessee State Museum was really cool. Maybe I'll pop some pictures on the side here. There was like a vintage sock knitting machine, which is crazy. Um, huge. 
it's huge. I thought sock knitting machines now were big. This sucker was huge. Um, there was like a loom that turned cotton, I think it was cotton or linen, no cotton, into like yarn. Um, all sorts of like sheep shearing stuff. There was so many cool fiber things in there and we definitely didn't see the whole museum, but I was able to see a couple things, which was really neat. Um, we went, where else do we go? My husband loves cars. We went to a couple car museums. He was so happy. The excitement on his face is probably my favorite part of the car museums. Am I really interested in the cars? Meh. But watching him freak out about stuff is so much fun. The one um, is called, I think, the Lane Auto Museum. We walked in and literally the first saw car he saw, he was like, oh my goodness, this is my favorite car of whatever this type was. I think it was like K cars? We're all knitters, so do we really care? No. <laughs> but he was so excited and it was so much fun to see him excited, so that was really cool. And yeah, it was just all over. It was nice to get away. We haven't traveled other than like to visit family and stuff in a very long time. So it was nice to get away and spend some time with his parents as well. My parents are coming to visit soon. They haven't been here in three or four years now, which is crazy. I feel like the house is going to look totally different to them. We've been doing so much. So it's been a really good summer so far. And yeah, I'm thankful for the rain because it's been really hot and dry. So my, my plants are happy. My dahlias are blooming like crazy, which is awesome. So yeah. Um, okay. I think that's all I had to say about Nashville. What I was saying before, before I remembered that I didn't talk about Nashville, was I don't know what I'm filming for a video for next week. I haven't really sat down and thought about it. It will likely be a pattern video. I haven't done one of those in a little bit. Um, so if there's any sort of patterns you want me to go hunting for for you, let me know. Um, just, yeah. I guess I, I did, did I call it a spring and summer garment video? So like what would be, I could do another sock one. That's probably a really good summer knitting video. Let me know. I don't know what I'm going to film, but you can probably help me. Can you tell we're getting near the end of the video? Because that's when I start to spin <laughs> on my chair. Because when I think, I can't sit still, apparently. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's everything. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. If you're new or if you're not, it means so much to me that you come and watch my videos. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to do so. Hit that like button as well. Helps out the channel a lot. And I will see you very soon. Bye. Yeah.